So this study came out in June of this year, and I was excited to be able to sit down and read it this past week. It was a study, first of its kind, that looked at applying repeated movement testing, which is the test that Robin McKenzie invented for orthopedics on patients who had cervicogenic headaches, which means headaches that are associated with postures, positions, and movements of the cervical spine, which is the neck. The title of this, Utilizing DP, which is Directional Preference, in the Management of Cervicogenic Headache, a Case Series. It came out in the Journal of Manual and Manipulative Therapy, JMMT. Authors were Lan Lin Pu, Miller, and Schenck. So they had 15 patients with an established cervicogenic headache, not a headache, for example, that was not associated with postures and movements of the neck. They looked at a couple tests, the cervical flexion rotation test, the craniocervical flexion test, and repeated movement testing, which is not in a lot of literature because it's not taught in academia. I did not learn it in my doctoral program. And therefore, if you do not read Robin McKenzie's five textbooks, and if you do not go to Robin McKenzie's courses held around the world, you do not know what repeated movement testing is. And one of the goals of my career is for more clinicians and even patients to understand that repeated movement testing is probably the most important test you can do with orthopedics, but you have to learn it. And it's not as easy as learning an anterior drawer test in a few minutes. It's an algorithm. You basically have to learn, take baselines or take a specific verbal history, take your baselines, range of motion, strength, nerve tension, functional movements, and maybe your CFRT or another test can be your baseline and then apply repeated movement testing, moving the patient's joint into one direction repeatedly and reassessing what happens to those baselines. So it's, it's more of a cause and effect and it's more cerebral than you know doing this and saying, oh, you have carpal tunnel. Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. That test is not so hot in my opinion. So it's the first of its kind that looked at repeated movement testing with these patients. They had 15 patients, they looked at the outcomes of numerical pain rating scale, which is a typical pain scale that we commonly use, the NDI neck disability index, the HDI headache disability index, and the yellow flag risk factor or risk form. And I underlined these three because at the end, they were demonstrated to be statistically significantly better. And they beat the minimal clinical um, indication of improvement, MCID, I'm drawing a blank on the acronym, but the intervention of applying the directional preference did show statistical improvements in those indices with patients, which is what you want an intervention to do. So let's go over these. I'm not going to go over every single data point that I've written, but I have taken the time to write out this figure from the study, which was wonderful. The authors did look at act, uh, range of motion of the cervical spine, probably the thoracic spine as well in many patients, if not all. And they looked at bilateral upper extremity strength testing too for the baselines. And I can't glean from the study what happened to those baselines, but because I know what repeated movement testing is, you're looking for a change, not just in pain, right? you're looking for a change in the range of motion or nerve tension if it's there or strength deficits if they're there. So that information is not available, but we can see the average or the amount of months that the symptoms had been there, the inclusion criteria required that it have, the patient have had headaches for at least three months. And this varies from three months to some patients with 120 and 240 months. So what we would call in the business chronic, um, I, I think that word is a little bit too ambiguous. I'd rather just say the pain has been there for five years, but nonetheless, long standing pain. And in terms of the symptoms, what I want to highlight here is that the symptoms are variable. Yes, they present with head pain, headaches, but there's also some upper extremity and neck and things of that nature. So I'll mention these. So left for the first patient, left temporal pain and neck pain. So temporal is going to be 
on the side of the head. Some of these patients have frontal pain in the front of the head or retroorbital, meaning behind the eyes. A lot of them present with contemporary neck pain, scap pain, um, bilateral hand tingling, let's see, um, suboccipital, so base of the skull pain, hand numbness, again, more scapular or shoulder blade symptoms, um, hand symptoms, hand pain, um, bilateral upper extremity pain, ear pain, jaw pain, face pain, tingling in the right hand. So variable, and as we know, there are dozens if not hundreds of causes of headaches, but one thing that hopefully this study starts to elucidate for people, especially those who don't already think about this, is that a lot of head pain can come from problems in the joints of the neck or mid-back, and especially if the patient's also complaining of scapular pain or hand numbness or forearm pain, that should give us an indication that there's also a higher likelihood of this being orthopedic because those are more orthopedic signs than, for example, a headache that's from a, a migraine. So directional preference. Directional preference, the DP, is the movement that significantly reduces or abolishes the symptoms and should also restore or significantly improve any baselines of the patient. So I'll go through these because it's interesting to note the variability here as well. I put S there for sustain. Most times we use movements repeatedly, like five retractions. But what I was taught when I started learning MDT and what is kind of borne out here is that we often use sustained more frequently when it comes to patients with headaches. So you go into that position like the first one, left side bend, and you sustain it for one minute or two minutes. And so for other patients, you might do that as well. I use sustained low back extension a lot, especially if patients are unable to do it repeatedly by pushing in prone. But sustained is a forced progression that we'll see more commonly in these patients, but also something I broach with patients with other complaints. So left side bend sustained, right side bend sustained, retraction extension, retraction, a few with retraction extension, retraction sustained, then thoracic extension, retraction, then retraction extension, thoracic extension, more retraction, left side bend sustained plus left thoracic rotation, left rotation sustained of the neck, left rotation sustained plus retraction extension, and finally just retraction. So one misconception of using Robin McKenzie's repeated movement testing is that we just use extension for everybody. And while it's true that the bulk of patients who have joint problems, joint derangements in the spine do need some form of extension in the sagittal plane, such as retraction or retraction extension or just pure extension, that's not everybody. One hypothesis is that most people need some form of extension because of the preponderance of flexion that we're in throughout our daily lives and how we really never go into extension. But derangements can happen over years due to lifestyle factors, but they can also happen acutely. You can fall and injure your joint, right? You can get kicked and injure your joint. But most patients that I'm seeing when I ask them, was there an event that started the pain? They say no. So a lot of patients are just having uh, symptoms come on over time or come on suddenly, but not because of a mini trauma or even a, or a big trauma. So there's variability in the directional preference and repeated movement testing is what helps me figure out what movement is the patient's directional preference. I'm not gonna get it on visit one in, in everyone, right? Sometimes I can figure out the directional preference on day one, but sometimes, you know, it takes more than one day of testing, which is what medicine is. You need to do often several tests. The problem with repeated movement testing is you can just do one test at a time. I can't have a patient go home and do retraction every couple hours and also left side bend every couple hours because those are very different forces to the neck. So if the patient returns to me and is better, 
I mean, that's good, but I don't know which one made the patient better. So I don't really know exactly how to proceed. Same with if they come back worse. I don't know which one made the person worse or if the combination made the person worse. And if they come back the same, well, maybe I had the right movement, but the other one canceled it out. So you cannot run a good scientific experiment by changing two variables at once. So almost always when I'm doing repeated movement testing, which starts in the office and continues at home, it's just one movement. And I need to understand the effect of that one movement on your knee or neck or headache or shoulder pain. And what happens to you informs where we go next if we need to change it, if we're on the right course and need more force, if we need more time, etc. So repeated movement testing is done to find out question one, is this a joint problem that has a directional preference? And two, if it is, what is that patient's specific directional preference? So the number of visits on average was like eight to nine for this cohort of 15 patients, but it varies from five to an outlier of 18. So if you take out the out outlier, everyone's between five and 11, which is wonderful considering this is non-invasive. There's no pharmaceuticals involved. There is no um, nerve blocks, injections, epidurals, and this is movement that carries very little risk and mostly is independent. So we might use our hands to apply a little force to assess how the joints are moving in the clinic, but by and large, we are teaching patients how to do retraction or how to do left side bend or how to do right rotation, etc. So I'm excited that this study is out there. If you have some questions, maybe put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Um, but the concluding statement is that clinicians and patients who are not getting repeated movement testing, you're missing out on this opportunity to figure out if this is actually the problem and all you need is a movement in a specific direction that we need to find together. Like I've said before, you can't rule in something if you doesn't if you don't know it exists, right? You can't rule in, yes, your diagnosis is joint derangement if you don't know what the heck a joint derangement is. But you also can't rule it out. So you can't be more confident. This is a hydration issue or a supplement issue or a interaction with medicine issue or migraine. You can't be more confident in that unless you've ruled out other things, especially other things that require less invasive and less risky care. So we can use the cervical tests that we learn and we can use all those orthopedic tests that we learn if we need them. The reliability and validity should be questioned, but repeated movement test testing, once the clinician learns it, will quickly or relatively quickly establish whether or not all the patient needs for the headache or the face pain or the dizziness or the vertigo or the neck, ear, scap pain is movement into a specific direction.